Coming up, I'll share my insights on Star Wars The Old Republic and why I think this game has what it takes to become your new big obsession on this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. Star Wars The Old Republic, often abbreviated as just Tor, is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game based in the Star Wars universe and created by Bioware. Now, one of the interesting things to note about this game is it has a rumored development budget of $135 million. If that's true, that would make The Old Republic one of the most expensive video games in history near a movie budget there. The story takes place in the Star Wars universe, and it's 3,500 years before the events of the Star Wars films that you're familiar with. Based on the Hero Engine and released for Microsoft Windows, players will find themselves needing to go with either two main factions, the Galactic Republic or the Sith Empire. This game is surely going to be one of the largest releases of 2011, and I was ready just to let it pass by. Okay, Internet, okay, you got me. I'm totally obsessed about this game. I cannot stop playing it. I'm not even a big Star Wars guy, and I love this game. I wasn't even going to buy this game, and I love this game. In fact, it was gifted to me from my co-host Heather over on SciBite. I thought, okay, free game. I better check it out. And I'll tell you what. I love this game. Completely consumed by it this holiday break. And I'm pretty glad I took some time off from the Jupiter Broadcasting shows because I wouldn't have had time to do them anyways. I was too busy playing Tor. But I realized it's kind of a fool's game to come out here and try to give you a review of an epic MMO like this when it's so early in its development cycle. Games change, especially, especially MMOs change over their lifetime. And so it sort of becomes this fool's attempt to give you a review of something that'll be completely different three months from now, or at least probably significantly different. They've already talked about adding new content, fixing bugs, so I thought that's not the approach I want to take for this week's episode. What I want to do is try to analyze the foundational underpinnings of this video game and see if it has what it takes to be a long-term successful MMO. Now that is a more interesting question and something I think we can tackle. So let's start with long-term planning on the part of the developers. How's that look? Even if you haven't played Star Wars Old Republic, probably one of the aspects about the game you're familiar with is a lot of the mission dialogue is voiced over, and it's really compelling. It's well done voiceover work that I actually was quite skeptical. I suspected this would be the part of the game that I liked the least. You know, kind of slow things down, maybe it would make group play awkward. I just had all of these assumptions that why it wouldn't work. Turns out it works great, the implementation is fantastic. I should have expected as much from Bioware, they're kind of known for doing this. But the community has brought up an important concern, and I think this plays into how well they've planned for uh, new features for the Old Republic down the road. One of the questions that was brought up is, hey guys, isn't all this voiceover stuff way more work and gonna slow down the release of new content because you gotta go get all these people to record the voiceovers, and if you have established characters and the voice talent's missing, then you're going to have to hold up the production of the new mission to get that talent back in there. This is going to be awful! Basically something kind of along those lines. And I thought the reply from the Star Wars Old Republic development team was actually pretty insightful. They've said that A, they already have a ton of the content written and recorded for a long, long runway. That has stuff that hasn't made in the game yet is already completed and shot. And you know, my limited experience with this kind of rings true. I went down to Cryptic about I don't know, two and a half, three months ago, and recorded some voiceovers for content that's not even in Star Trek Online yet. May never go in, I don't know. But what I do know is they're able to record that stuff way ahead of time and sort of work on it secondarily from the main development process, a different set of hands, different set of talent. So that's really good, and it shows they've got good long-term planning. But what's important is it means these amazing scenes in Star Wars Old Republic that pull you into the game that make it an epic movie that you want to sit back, pause the podcast, turn down the music, and listen to what these characters are saying is going to continue. I am completely thrilled with the way they've pulled this off, especially considering I was such an early hater. And that's good, that's great, but one of the most important aspects to an MMO, because it is a massively multiplayer game, is the community. Now, it's all early, but I have gotten an early gauge of the community and here's what I think. This isn't an area I can go into a ton of detail about because now that the game's just been released, the real community will start forming. You have the early beta folks, and you have tons of guilds already set up, and that's all extremely good and positive. Ah, uh, but now the metal actually is being pressed, and we'll see what comes out. What I have noticed is explosive growth. In fact, 
Just one metric will go by is say reddit.com. Reddit has a Star Wars The Old Republic subreddit on there. And over the last month or two, you've been able to watch this thing go from uh, 1,000 members, 8,000 members, to where now it ranks at 20,478 members. When I started recording this episode, it was at 20,300 members. I mean, it is really growing quite fast. And so much so that the Old Republic dev team has actually acknowledged this subreddit and have started showing up and doing Ask Me Anything. So now, they haven't gone great, but it's all early and, you know, things will get better over there. Also, just an internal metric, anytime Jupiter Broadcasting has done an episode on Star Wars Old Republic, we've seen tremendous, tremendous traffic to that. There's obviously a massive community there. BioWare says that they already have about one million active players. Now, to fuel this numbers game, of course, BioWare has released some details. They say that they have 60 million hours already played in the game since its launch, 44 million PvP battles, 810,000 Jedi Knights, and interestingly enough, 850,000 Sith Warriors, which is what I am. Uh, So the numbers are already staggering for a game like this. You have a healthy community, you have long-term dev planning, But there's still one more piece that's missing. Well, it's the story, silly. Of course. I mean, that's what Tor is known for, but it's true. It is an epic tale that makes me think of my character as, well, a character, like in a movie. And not just some avatar on screen, but like a dude I care about. Like you care about a main character in a great film. And when I'm not playing the game, I'm thinking about the people I've crossed or the people I'm going to cross, the decisions I'm going to make, what it all means. I mean, that is extremely compelling from an MMO video game. And that's good. I mean, that is good. That'll make it have long-term success for sure. But there are still some issues like bugs and other little things that people are complaining about. So what about those? Bugs, you say? On this epic AAA title, there's bugs? Yes, of course. In fact, if you want to see a train wreck of bugs, just go over to the uh, link in the show notes. I have a link to a Reddit Ask Me Anything discussion thread where you can see what a ton of the bugs people are really upset about. I'm not going to get into all of that because I said I wouldn't. This is more about the fundamentals of the game, and those things like bugs are going to get fixed. In fact, positive indications are that they have two separate sets of teams, one working on new content that we should start seeing the next month, and another team working on just fixing the bugs, so they don't have to do one or the other, which is a relief for a lot of players. I'll just talk about a couple of the things that um, sort of bother me. They are technically bugs, but they're more like immersion killers. And when you have something that really brings you in, like the story and the voice acting does in this game, These little immersion breakers really pull you out. I'll start with one. The grass. I I don't know if it's because I have you super fancy graph setting turned on or what, but as you're running, you actually see the grass grow up out of the ground. The first dozen times you see that, it's kind of badass. You're like, yeah, that's cool. That's like the whole world is assembling around me. That's cool. Uh, After that, though, you start really just getting annoyed by the fact that all you really notice when you're running around is the grass growing around you. Um, It seems like a silly thing, But it's constantly happening whenever you're moving around and you just can't help but have your eye caught by it and it's distracting. Another thing, the companion system. I love the companion system. You have a dude, he's with you all the time. He can sell your items for you. He can do what are called crew tasks and that's great. And he's also a good help. He really does have some great combat and he can follow you and, you know, do a lot of great things. Okay, so you you know, I love the companion. A couple of things that really bother me about the companion though. Um, first, he follows me too closely. He just needs to back up. Get off get off me. Because sometimes I'm trying to loot stuff or I'm trying to click on stuff and he's just all up in my grill and I cannot do anything and it drives me crazy. You guys might know what I'm talking about. So, you know, dude, back off a little bit. That's one thing. The other thing that kind of reinforces that for some reason these companions sort of feel bolted onto the game. They're probably what I would consider one of the lesser polished aspects. Uh, an- another example. If you want to travel, which you... You have to travel in MMOs, and you take a taxi. They have two seat taxis. You sit in one seat, your companion just doesn't get on for the ride, and you fly across the world with an empty seat, and he just vanishes and then reappears wherever you go. Maybe another example of the companion sometimes feeling clunky or bolted on is with all of the dialogues. Whenever you're speaking with an NPC, they're heaping praise on you for how incredibly amazing you are as you know, the one only per, a one man army who went down there and cleaned out that entire cave. When in reality, your companion is just standing right there and he's not getting any kind of recognition for the work that he's done. It kind of seems like some of the dialogue was written before they decided they were going to even have a companion in the game. 
that or the people writing the dialogue didn't really think about it. Whatever it is, it doesn't feel like a good fit. So when you have somebody who's following you too closely, jamming up all your stuff, C-blocking your loot, and then you got some dude who won't ride in your taxi, and, nobody pr and everybody pretends like he's not there, you end up kind of having something that feels a little bolted on. That's not that major. Other than that, there's been some graphical glitches that I've run into and things like that, but I really honestly haven't had many problems. Most of the big things that I know people are really upset about, I have pretty good faith that Bioware will get patches out there in the next few months to fix. And that just about brings us to the end of this week's episode of An In-Depth Look. I was kind of nervous about doing this because this is a huge game. So I hope uh, I covered some of the interesting fundamentals for you guys, but I know I missed some things. It's just, it's just impossible not to with something this big. So let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment wherever you're watching this. And I want your ideas for future episodes of An In-Depth Look. Hit me up on any social network you like. You can find links to all of my profiles over at bit.ly slash chrisfisher. And you can also send me an email, chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Now, next week, we're getting back into the technical stuff, so go over to Jupiter Broadcasting every Saturday for a new episode of An In-Depth Look, where you'll also find the show notes. Just find the, this episode post. You can find RSS feeds. And if you'd like to support Jupiter Broadcasting and you're going to buy Star Wars Old Republic, or maybe you want to buy a time card, there's links in the show notes. When you purchase those, a portion of your purchase does support Jupiter Broadcasting. So thanks to everyone who does this. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of An In-Depth Look, and I'll see you right back here next Saturday.